Hello everyone, Karen Glasser here and welcome to this episode of The Passion Point. This is the show where we follow passionistas from all around the world who are following their passion, making a living doing what they love. And today's guest is Susan Jacobs. I'm really excited to have Susan on, especially because of this journey that I've been on, my little white lie. And Susan is, is really pretty amazing. She is an image professional, an image professional. I'm going to ask you in a little while, Susan, what an image professional, what that defines actually means. And she helps clients increase their confidence, their credibility, and profitability through authentic style. She's also very passionate about giving back to the community, and she does this in a variety of ways. One of the charities, and actually her favorite charity, is Make-A-Wish, and I'd love to talk about that with you as well, Susan, today. One of her favorite quotes she talks about is, it takes a village, and um, she's very pleased that she's found a way to marry her passion for helping others reach their potential and giving back to the community all at the same time. Very, very cool. Susan, welcome to the show. Thank you, and I'm so happy to be here, Karen. I appreciate it. Oh, oh my gosh, I'm so excited that you're here today. And I like to start the show with the definition of passion. So it, Webster's Dictionary, I'm just going to give you Webster's Dictionary, and then I'm going to ask what Susan's dic- uh, definition okay. is. Webster says that passion is an intense driving or overmastering feeling or conviction. That's what Webster says. What does Susan say? What's passion? I can tell you that for me, Passion is part of my why. Without passion in my life, in whatever it is, I would feel lost. So passion guides me. I feel like it centers me. It's who I am. I really love that definition. In fact, I can honestly say that's the first time that I've heard it described that way, that you would be lost if you didn't have it. That is such an interesting concept that you are driven by your passion, literally, right? Correct. It's, it's there in whatever I do. Most of the times, it's an asset. <laughs> and sometimes not so much, right? Yes, sometimes, yes, it's true. true. Okay, well, Susan, this is, this is really all about you today, and I really would like you to tell us your journey to becoming an image consultant and your work in the community. So go as far back as you want, maybe not in utero, but as far <laughs> back as you want. Tell us your journey. How did you get to where you are today? You know, it does go a long way back, Karen, because I was an educator for many years. I will say it takes me right back to when I was a young girl. I went to a school where I wore uniforms my entire school career. And but my mom was such a role model for me. I can remember sitting at her dressing table, watching her get ready for her day. And I would say in my head, I want to be just like her when I grow up. Impeccable, a minimalist, but always fine tune and spot on in terms of how she presented herself and how she showed up visually. And then, you know, go through school and into university. I was one of those girls who, because I suppose I was in uniforms for 13 years, when I got to university, I wasn't the person in the sweats and the jeans. I was, it was my stage. The, I dressed every day and it was fun because I suppose I like to experiment I was creative. It was, it was a creative outlet for me. And I soon became the go-to person for friends that would say, Sue, what do I wear? What do you think? Wow. That, that how fun is that? So you went from being in this very rigid kind of environment, oh, wearing the same yes. thing all the time. And I can imagine if, as a creative person, what that did to your head, right? So here yep. you, you went totally the other way. And in fact, you made yourself um, a go-to person. It worked out that way, and then I became a teacher, and it also happened, that role, it just seemed to come, to come up. I will tell you, Karen, as a teacher, I, you know, I feel like I felt that we had had a potential huge influence on the children. So I used, every day, I dressed up for myself first, but I wanted them to know that I appreciated them and I made an effort. So that role, my dressing people, became something that other teachers would ask me about. And one day, I do believe one of the principals said to me, you know what, we have to do something about how the younger teachers are dressing, what do we do? And I can remember this like it was yesterday. I said, well, it all starts with you because you're the boss. So that (laughs) happened. And yes, so it was, sort. it was, I think it's, it was definitely where I was meant to be because that's where I am. You know, I, I have a, it, it, an inside kind of question to ask you. Do you believe um, that if we start with our children, that our children can teach their parents as well as to Oh, rest? absolutely. 
It is, I am witness to that. My children, I've learned so many things from my children. I've learned from my students. I feel like, to be honest, I'm a believer that life is a lifelong journey, learning journey. And when I'm not learning, I will be in the ground. Well, don't do that anytime soon, okay? No, but <laughs> I do think that we learn, I learned from every experience. I was thinking of that today too. Yeah, I was, I was thinking, I was asking you that because in, I, I used to be a cantor and a, at a synagogue mm -hmm. and I remember walking into the synagogue the first day, it was a Friday evening and I was, you, you got dressed up, you know, you wore a dress when you went yes. to the services. And I remember walking into the services the very first time and everyone sitting in the congregation were in shorts and t-shirts oh. and I it I just had a really hard time with that because I felt it, it showed a little bit of a lack of respect yes however I grew to understand that at least they were there and so I, I kind of grew with that but we started teaching the kids respectful clothing when they came into the sanctuary and lo and behold as they started to wear more respectful clothing so did their parents and so I was just curious if that was it's it's very true. I think children can teach us a lot. And I do think that many people who are wise and open minded can learn from their children because kids are unbiased. They say it like it is. They don't have to fear, you know, no they, filter. Have, they have no yes, filter. <laughs> exactly. So I do like that. And I think it's so true. So you became the go to person. And then what was your next step? What happened after that? So my daughter was living in Japan at the time. We, I took some time off teaching to go and visit her. Um, and being in Japan, oh my goodness, it, it was so apparent how the women have such respect for themselves. It didn't matter what social level we visited, where, whether they were working in the palatial gardens or we were at a high-end restaurant, the women had a sense of pride. The second our plane landed back in North America, my husband looked at me and he goes, you know what? You need to do something about this. It was so startling. The, and I feel that women definitely are missing out. We're missing out on not making an effort, not being aware on the potential and the influence that they potentially could have. So my teaching colleagues actually were the ones who encouraged me to do this. And I said, are you kidding? I thought you appreciated me in the board and you know, I do a lot of in-service training for teachers. They said that Sue, this is something that people don't know. They really don't understand. And if you haven't had a role model growing up in your life who, who models appropriate behavior for different audiences, it's not there. So I actually taught for a year and I did the wardrobing on the side to see, is this going to work? Would people actually pay me? to help them move forward in terms of how they're showing up. My gosh, I, the, net, the year later, that was the end, and this is going on to my 10th year. I've never looked back. Wow, that's quite a story. But I, I don't think that what, I don't think you're saying, uh, maybe you are, but I don't think that you're saying that um, when people, that, that you're suggesting people need to put all their makeup on and get all, as my oh. mother would say, all for pits and, and oh. press to the nose every single day from the moment they walk out. No. I don't think that's what you're saying. It's more Absolutely. like having respect for yourself and, and showing up not unkempt. And it, it is all about self-respect. I will say to people, and I have to be careful when I say this, I first dress for myself. Um, there are a couple of things that my husband will look at me and say, Oh, that's interesting. It doesn't mean I'm taking it off. It means because if it suits me and I feel like my own skin in it, you know what? I'm going to wear it because that's when I feel best. So that authentic self, I do feel that your clothes have to feel one with you. Mm -hmm. So that has given me a career in this industry because that is so often not the case. I, I just, I, I'm fascinated, you know, as I said, especially because of this journey that I'm on and yes. the, the messages from me is very much in alignment, obviously with you. It's n we're not telling you how to get dressed and we're not telling you not to, you know, to get rid of your wrinkles or not to get rid of your oh. wrinkles or to, you know, wear a certain size shoe. We're, we're telling people and we're, we're helping people and encouraging people to be their best you, right? It's uh, a, be their best person. It's, it's so true. This is about you. You are your you, Y-O-U brand. 
Um, you are your unique. And I feel like whether it's in business, entrepreneurs especially, or women who are stay-at-home moms, if you want to feel better, you, need, you can do that in terms of showing up by just making a bit of an effort. And you know what? You said something a minute ago about putting on your makeup and all of that. Absolutely not. It is all relevant to the situation. And I am certainly one of those women who is a minimalist when it comes to makeup. If I'm out and about on our property, why? You know, oh, nat natural is beautiful. It feels good. Right. No, so, I, I agree. Yeah. I totally agree. I, I am like a no-maintenance girl, except when I get on camera. And yeah. even more recently, you know, I have realized i got to put some lipstick on because I disappear into the screen. Yes. I might normally not wear lipstick during the day. Yeah. And also, as your hair changes color, and as, as, we, as we age, you know, our colors change, and we need to stay yeah. with it and stay on top of it. So tell me, if somebody comes to you and says, Sue, I need some help, what is generally the first step that you do? Oh, my goodness. No, you know what? I ask a lot of questions, and I have learned to listen very carefully because there are things that they're not saying that then I can re-turn around the words and make sure that I'm very clear that they're clear on what they need from me because many times uh, women will call and or reach out through an email and I don't do the booking appointments through email just to let you know Karen I feel it's important to have a conversation on the phone so that I can get a sense of who is this person they can also check me out and feel is is this connection going to work right is it going to be good for me and and, and I also need, this is something you didn't ask, but I, I need a person who's going to be open-minded mm -hmm. and willing to maybe step out of the comfort zone a little bit and release some of the power. Because if I can't do my job, if there's too many restraints, that person's not ready to move forward. So that's really the first part of the whole journey with my clients. Many times women will call and think that they need one thing, and by the end of the conversation, mm -hmm they have realized that is not at all what they needed, but they knew they needed something. So right. it's great. You know, and I think it's also not everybody is for everybody. I mean, there are oh. obviously oh. a tremendous amount of image consultants, wardrobe consultants, you know, up the yin yang yes. all yes. over the place. For some sure. People, some people that call themselves that and have never actually trained, and some okay. people that, you know, well, we won't talk about that. But uh, that's another how, conversation. But how do you find somebody how would you suggest the out the end of me, how, an individual yes. person that knows that they want to up their game just a little bit, or maybe just be their best you and they need some help? How do they find somebody? What are the questions they can ask to make sure that they are going to be with the right person that will work for them? Uh, I will tell you something that's easy, easier now for them to, to find the right fit is that they can go on the potential image consultants website. Looking at video, watching, I love to scroll through pictures and see what is that person doing? Who is she engaged in? How is she engaged when she is in the forefront and the background? And I like to read about the behind the scenes. What is this person up to? I, I, feel, I feel like that is how, to be honest, I got on track with some of your peers yourself, is you can tell a lot about people, who they are, by doing your homework. Right. And, you know, and it needs to be, some of it is smoke and mirrors, I get that, but you will be able to tell that. A smart person can read through all of that. And I will tell you, many, many a time I've had a phone call or an email that says, I have gone through your website, I've read about you, I've watched your videos, I've seen who you support in terms of charities, and I, I have eliminated others because of X, Y, and Z. So I do think, feel that that is what, you need to do is do your homework. Well, I, I so exactly. I think that's so important. And while while we're on that subject right now, for those of you who want to get in touch with Susan, just I'm going to throw it out. By the way, guys, everything that we talk about is going to be in the post right below. All of the links, all the ways to get in touch with Sue. But just in case you're wondering, right this very minute, you might be watching the show and you say, "I have to go right now. I got to go check her out her website." <laughs> it's it's www dot personal style consulting dot com and when you go there you're going to be able to do exactly what sue is talking about check mm -hmm. her out and that's what you want to do you want to check her out what other things as a as a woman or do you do you dress men as well i do i often end up with husbands 
Um, and the odd time a, a woman will reach out and then that becomes, they always stay with the, us during the appointment, which is great because ultimately they become a client as well. So yes, I do, but primarily women, Karen. Okay, so um, a, a woman is looking around, they're gonna come to you and they, they, they decide you're, you're it. Generally, yes. what do you, you go shopping with them after you've asked all the questions? What do you do? How does this work? I've never actually, obviously, no. stylist. <laughs> That's fine. And everyone, I, I have to say, this is the way I do it. I was trained by uh, someone who lives not far from you, Brenda Kinsella, and I liked that it was an evergreen sort of strategy. I have a style appointment, which is a four-hour initial appointment with all of the clients. When we get together, they will have uh, completed some paperwork, self-discovery work for me so that we can go over it together in person. There are a couple of exercises we do together. I really need to see them in their space. I can tell a lot about them when I see where they live, what they surround themselves Their closets with. and what their closets uh, are. Actually, that's the last part that we huh. do. I really? want to be, yes, because, you know, life gets busy. I can work on the closet, but I want to know who is this person? How am I going to 99.9% .9 pull a wardrobe that is perfect when I've only met them for four hours? So it's a lot of introspective and listening and dialogue and we come up with words and they approve of the words that have that we have sort of i have heard them say or i've said hmm you've described that this way i see that all of your say you have a lot of wood in your home you like organic you like herbal tea i see that you have a perennial garden all of those things lead me to a certain style of personality i will have words and then I will show them what their words look like in terms of wardrobe pieces. That's when we go to the closet and they will make an outfit for me and I'll say, hmm, do you see chic here? Do you see reliable? Do you see sassy? And usually they're going, okay, I know why this isn't working because that's how they're not really aligning who they are on the outside with what's trying to be to come out from the inside well, it sounds like, yeah it sounds like you're not just te you're, you're not just dressing them you're teaching no. them how yes. to be their own dresser oh. so that when they yes. go out to buy new pieces yes they're sitting on their shoulder they hear yeah. your voice right <laughs> so what would you do yes so i must tell you that um i have clients who really they're very busy business women they have full lives they don't want to know why i do they don't want to know why it works they just want to say okay what's the next step all right we shop and then i go back to their home after they have had a chance to play with the clothes for a couple of weeks and we will do digital recordings so i'll take pictures on their iPhone for them or some people like tactile they like a wardrobe chart so that they're going to see that investment piece that dress that we spent $500 on I'm going to show them three four five ways that they can wear it at different dress levels to a networking event to a corporate event on a weekend going to wine tasting so that's really the value piece so they see the return on that investment and then they don't have to worry about having a wardrobe that sits here for, for these events. This is my weekend wardrobe. I'm not one of those people that wants to have all those things. You, they need to have pieces that work mix and match. in harmony. Abs right. Mixing that to what mom used to say. That's, that's right. What do you, right. What do you say um, to or, or respond when you see these magazine articles and these interviews of people that say, when you hit 40, you should not wear oh. this. When you oh. are this age, you shouldn't. You shouldn't have gray hair when you're 30. Oh, what do you say? What, what's your response when people say, oh, well, I was told I can't do that because I'm a certain age? I'm going to say, you know what? Here is the deal. Rules are made to be broken. What used to be isn't. It's now. Whatever works for you now, this is where we're going because it doesn't matter what happened yesterday or that your size two skinny jeans don't fit. Here's my solution. Get rid of them. Let's not worry about it. Life is here for the present. And I work with, I, we don't, I don't have any negative self-talk during my appointments. That's made very clear. And I say to them, like I think I read or someone that you interviewed, don't fear the mirror. Look in the mirror. You need to know what you're missing out on and what all of us are seeing because that's the reality. Shift your focus. So, well, that's what I say about people in the camera. Every, when I get people on camera with me, I would say nine out of 10 people say, I hate the way I look oh, on the camera. And I right. say, 
snap out of it. You look exactly yeah. how you look. The yeah. way people see you on camera is exactly how they see you in person. That is, I mean, it's us who have to get used to seeing ourselves, which is oh. why I am 100% in agreement with you. I'm the one who said it. Go look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Look at yourself. Love yourself. Get to see the parts that you really, really love. Look at the parts that maybe you don't love so much. But then there's ways to yeah. make, make it okay. Right. There's ways to make those bits you don't like disappear. Right. So, you know, we can do that with strategic, with clothing. Right. I do it to myself and right. I see a little doggy. Um, but I wanted to say also that I feel like it, it, it's very much coaching and cheerleading. Right. So it's different. I don't call myself a personal shopper. I really, I do not shop with my clients until I've worked through the very first style appointment because I, I don't want to just buy them clothes. I want these clothes to be part of them. I want them to put them on and love them. And I want those clothes to be there until they're sick of them. So I think that sets you apart. Yeah. I think that sets oh, you apart. Thanks. Style, stylist. So, okay. I'm going to ask, I'm going to give you a quote because I love quotes every week. Okay. I do quotes. And Good. this week's quote is, and I'm going to read it because I'm 60 and can't remember. You know what? Um, <laughs> <laughs> Leadership is about making others better as a result of your presence and making sure that impact lasts in your absence. Ooh. Absolutely. That's amazing. I really like that. And I think that's why it's important to be listening to our clients. And I will tell you, that's typically was hard for me. Coming from a teaching role, you are teaching, you are talking. talking. You, yes. I can remember a t period of time where on the back of my office door I had a sign and it said just stop talking because we are fixers we want to make it better that's not sustainable we know that so I really shifted and hearing what they have to say and going back to that passion I may see this person differently but if they're not there it isn't going to work I never want a client to say to me, I have never worn that piece of clothing. That's, that's, that means I didn't listen. There was something that went wrong. So that's my, kind of my guide. I, I really appreciate that. I know that your favorite quote is, it takes a village. Can you tell us why? What do you like oh about that? Oh my gosh. I've loved it forever and I really don't know why. I guess I feel like we are always stronger with collaboration and others. And I don't think anyone is an island and I feel like when I see that I believe you know it sort of is a red flag to me that that's not the case I um was again role model my parents were very big community-minded people I felt that that was important it levels the playing field I feel that a lot of people uh grow up in circumstances and we need to walk in other people's shoes right. so that we can appreciate not everyone, I, I was told recently, not everyone cares about that. That's fine. Um, but the people that I surround myself with, that is their part of their who they are. Um, takes a village. When you look at, I, I feel like through my consulting business, I have been able, like you said, I'm thrilled that I could, can put on fashion events, not typical fashion shows, because I'm showcasing women who never in a million years would have gone on a stage and been able to say, here's how I used to look, here's the image of me, here's where I am today, and here's why this is important. Um, if you can do that, and then you can make money for an organization that is important, like Make-A-Wish, uh, we have a place, my sister's place, why wouldn't you do that? It just, it's just, right. I can, so why not? I, it's wonderful. Um, well Sue, you're wonderful. Yes. You're oh, wonderful. thank you. You know, I, I really appreciate the message that you have, and, and I appreciate the fact that you're so community-minded. Your quote is community-minded. Your journey has been community-minded. Is there any last thoughts you want to share with the audience before we say goodbye? I can't believe how fast this has gone by. Any last thoughts? Um, I think that we need to really think about, and I'm doing it myself, as we age and we're at this age, is remember that... It all, it's all about ourselves. If you allow that negative Nelly to take over, you're not, you're not going to be happy. You're not going to fulfill. You're not going to enjoy your life. It is very short-lived. I know it's cliche, but embrace it. I cannot tell you, Karen, that I, when the longer maxi dresses and the little booties became on trend a year ago, I thought, oh my gosh, I want to do that. The thought of me going bare-legged at this age 
I thought, I can't. And I almost would need those smelling salts. Okay. But I decided, you know what? I'm doing it. And I can't tell you how liberating it is. And you know what? Just do it. And because guess what? People aren't noticing you as much as you think. It, you know, they give you the once over and then it's back to what are you doing? You're engaging, you're chatting, you're building a relationship. So let's just move on. Well, would you agree they're probably worrying about how they look? Oh, my god! They're too gosh. busy looking, worrying about themselves. So just do it. That's such a great comment. Just so do it. True. Sue, thank you so much oh. for being on the show. For all of our viewers, as I said, just make sure you check down below. You're going to see all of Sue's information. Go check her out. Tell her I sent you. And for all of our viewers, we know that you have a choice as to where you spend your time. And I want to thank you for spending time with us today. And we'll see you next time on the next episode of The Passion Point. Goodbye, everyone.